Have you paid too much for that condo assignment? Are people paying too much? Uh, prices are all over the place. I see prices of, you know, average condo in Toronto, 660000 700000 650000 But for the same price, you can get a condo on the subway line or behind Liberty Village. <laughs> or you can get it in, uh, you know, out of town or right in downtown. So what's going on? Like, where is the value? So let's talk about if you paid too much for that condo. You'll see Kaplan here, Toronto real estate agent and mortgage broker. Research Realty and Search Mortgage. What an amazing company. So happy and grateful to be able to work at Search. So uh, this week, I posted a thing called uh, 660,000. That's the average condo. That's according to Market Watch. And believe it or not, I sold, I just sold a condo for uh, less than that on the subway line in an amazing location. And to me, I thought it was a steal. And anyone that had grabbed that unit, <sighs> We'll do so well. We'll do so well on the ROI. We'll do so well on the cash flow. We do so well on the appreciation. Now, the first year or two of condos these days, because the PSF, the dollar per foot, is quite high, uh, you may find it hard to break even on your running costs at an 80-20 rule, which is okay. Nobody ever said that it has to break even on 80-20. It can break even on 70-30. And what I mean by that, by the way, is um, you put the deposit of 20% and the bank loans you the 80. So you're 20% owner and the bank is 80% owner. Um, so that means your, your mortgage costs are higher, so your ROI is lower. But if you put a little bit more money down, then your mortgage costs are lower and your ROI, your ROI is better and better and better. Okay? So the same condo you can buy around uh, Strawn there behind Liberty Village. When you go down to Liberty Village, now, there's no streetcar, there's no subway, there's the Ossington bus number 63 running. It's a terrifying thought to think to myself that I had to go in that bus every day. It's just so slow and it takes forever and if I need to walk out of there, it's so windy and there's so many cars. Uh, but it's the same price and literally, maybe you get 50 square feet more, but your rent's going to be a lot less and the ROI is not going to be as good. And the appreciation is not going to be as good. So why are people um, not willing to invest the same amount in a way better location, way better ROI, uh, way better p appreciation potential, and they'd rather go where everyone else is? <laughs> well, maybe that's the answer. Everyone, all these people are going where everyone else. They're all going. It's like a flock. You know, like how all these birds know all fly together. I have no idea how they do it, um, how they all know go. You know, they're all flying circles, like, you know, a, a, a flock of birds. They all flock together. Birds of feather flock together. Maybe that's, maybe that's, you know, I'm just thinking about it. Maybe that's the real answer, but I'm going to tell you now how not to pay too much, okay? It's very easy. Um, there's two things you need to understand. You need to understand the value of what you buy in relation to everything around you, the, the immediate locality, and then <coughs> you got to, understand the value of what you're buying based on everything else. You want to park here? There you go. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Winter. Fun. Okay, so if I if I look there's Kingley, okay? There's Kingley uh, right there. 620 King for the commercial address 507 Adelaide for the residential um, you can get a unit here for about 1,100 a foot, okay, so a 500 square feet unit, they're going to ask you about $600,000, give or take, 550, okay. Um, is it a high price? Yeah, it is. Um, is it a low price? No, it's not. Is this a super high price? No, it's not. Um, do you have Subway here? No, but it's King West. You got the King car. Uh, you can get anywhere in town. Remember, I'm not a proponent of getting on the Subway because look what's going on the Subway. It, it just... The subway is just no good. Forget about the subway. Who wants to go on a subway every morning? It's ridiculous. Um, but is it overpriced? If you bought something here, uh, did you pay too much? Well, look at the return that you can make. And here's another building right next door. Now, it's not as fancy. That's 525 Adelaide. It's just like your generic building. It's not as fancy. A lot of rentals here. Lots of investors everywhere. Um, and the price is not going to be much different. Okay. Now, the 5% uh, difference between this thing here, and not very sightly, and this thing here with the fancy restaurant. I just discovered it's like it's a Dasha 
dash dasha. It's a kind of fancy place. Okay, I'd rather be in a kingly. Why? Because the potential for appreciation, the potential for a good tenant, the potential uh, for everything is way, way higher here. What's investing? It's for the future. I invest in the future. I believe that's going to be good, so that's where I'm going to go. Now, if I want to say five bucks, no problem. I go to 525 right there, and there you go. Um, but in the long run, who's going to win? A person that buys in this building, Indigo Chapter is here, Shopify is here, a bunch of tech companies is here. There's, there's a commercial section in this building. No one here is making under 100000 Or you can go here, and that's more like service industry. And there's nothing wrong with service industry. I'm on myself. But the service industry on average makes a lot less than the computer industry. Okay, see what I'm saying? So where's the value? The value is, is, is what the human can tell you or the computer can never say. If you pay the same price at Liberty Village where you could have paid on the subway line or King West or any good uh, Young and Eglinton, which is just the same price, okay, uh, you're probably going to find units that are 1000 for two bedroom and maybe 1100 for the one bedroom, and I'm talking dollar per foot here, or you can pay the same price in this thing. Come on. Now, that's not a bad building, but I want a discount here. I want a discount enough to make my IRI worth my time because my appreciation not only is good. Here, I may pay a little bit more now, but I expect my IRI to be a lot better, my tenants to be a lot better, the neighbors to be a lot better, and it's a smaller building because most of it is commercial. These are all offices, okay? And all these offices are filled with computer people making a lot of money. So I want to be in the area where the, the potential is the highest. So what's the right price? The right price is not the dollar value necessarily or the dollar per foot value, but it's the potentiality. How far can I take this? How many years can I sit on the investment and just enjoy it year after year without really doing anything besides just looking at my bank account every first of the month and thanking my lucky star for being able to do that, okay? So I like the mixed commercial building. Uh, the Kingly, it's also called the King Portland Center. Okay, so this is the commercial piece, 620 King, a scary restaurant, a bunch of restaurants here. You can see a lot of young people coming in, rushing into the door, and you see like they have new shoes and they have nice clothes and all the fancy headphones because they can afford it. Look at this restaurant here with all the fancy stuff, okay? You can't walk into the, any of these places, we spend $100 for lunch, okay? That's where I want to be. So if you are paying the same price at the armpit of Toronto, instead of paying the same price where you can be in the center, you'll pay too much. <laughs> but hey, if you pay the same price at, the, at one of the best places, you did great. Now, back to the subway. There are so many people hung on the subway here. I think it's an Asian thing. You know, I've been to Hong Kong. Obviously, like, you can't move around there without public transport, and don't even start me with the Toronto public transport. It's, it's a mess, okay? No politician wants to touch it because then they have to spend the money, and then, of course, they're going to lose the job. So it's a conundrum. You know, our, our governing system is not allowing us to actually act for the good of everyone, and what's best for everyone is to get rid of these cars. You know, like, the Tesla's going to drive itself anyways. It's just a matter of days, months, years. We won't need all these cars. We'll need maybe a bit, but not that many. You can just rent one when you need one. But the rest, you know, the auto, the robo-taxi will come pick you up, drop you off. It's all, uh, it's all electric, no pollution. It's all good. So moving into the 2020s and beyond, we really have to change our thinking about investment, investing. And you start thinking about much longer horizon. A lot of people, you know, they don't sleep overnight and do all the numbers and they go, but I can't break even. Well, you... If you're going to pay the same dollar per foot for the same 600 square feet, you better buy it where the ROI potentiality is the highest, not the lowest, the highest. So I got a lot of people come to me and I show them units and they just look at me and they just don't get it. They don't get it. And it finally dawned on me that the issue of value is a lot more than number. It's, it's accumulation of everything, everything that you know. And especially people who are not used to Toronto or from the, even from the suburb, you know. Even if you come just from outside of Toronto, just from outside of the core, and you're coming to buy the core, you know, these days I'll be very, very careful to buy the core because there's so many buildings there. 
Yes, they're all great, they're all amazing, the, te the construction technology is good, everything's cool, but there's just so much supply. So where can I find a place, an area, where there's really high quality, but not that much supply? I like that. If I go around Liberty Village, Straw, and Fort York, there's so many buildings. A lot of them built already 10 and 20 years ago. There's nothing wrong with them, but they can provide you uh, a lot less dollar per foot when you buy than the new ones. Should you go in those? Well, if your budget is limited and, you don't, and you're okay with being in Fort York, then you can go there. But if you could find the same unit, uh, the same price, same square footage, even 5% more, instead of Fort York, on a streetcar line, that's way better. Because I still need to get around. And if you can find that on King West or Yorkville or Young and Eglinton or any of these areas, you know, St. Clair, all the way to the 401, totally good totally good, then I would encourage you to do so, okay? So the, the question of value is really missed here. And I see a lot of people, you know, people call me every day, you know, see, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about that. A lot of people told me what they bought too, and my friends, they did not do the best deal. They used their hard-earned money, and they could have bought way better. You could have done way better. Yes, you overpriced for that. You, you, that assignment is overpriced. Last night, I saw an assignment for 12 50 a foot on Strawn and East Liberty. Come on. Now, will it reach 1250 a foot? Of course it will. But why? I can spend that 1250 a foot way better. I can spend 1100 a foot here, King West. Not the back there, armpit of King West, okay? I don't know if I'm making any sense to you, but I hope I do. Um, obviously, the people that call me are smart investors. They want advice, they want to put the best for themselves. Now, the thing with real estate is a psychological thing. Everyone knows, they, they, everyone thinks they know everything about real estate, right? But when you go to the dentist, you don't fix your teeth yourself. You don't fix your plumbing yourself. You don't fix the electric yourself. You don't, you don't fix your car yourself. Because you know it takes certain skill and knowledge and tools. And real estate is just the same, just like everything else. You know, just like the lawyer, just like the accountant. Now, unfortunately, uh, psychologically, socially, real estate hasn't been put on the pedestal like an accountant or a lawyer. Oh my God, they got to go to the accountant. They know all the little tricks. Well, so do the realtors, the good ones, for sure they do. So that's what you got. Okay, getting loud here. So I'm out of here. <laughs> yes, many of you, most of you have, have overpaid. Overpaid for assignments, overpaid for condos, overpaid for everything. You probably overpaid for your shoes. So stop doing that. Uh, start learning what value is. And in order to do that, you really have to release the preconceptions that you have about value, okay? Release the 2080. It's 2020 now. Things are different. You got to think different. You got to be different. In order to beat the market, you got to start thinking way longer term, way more in value.